lot of research that needs to be done. Let's see, it's been being recorded, continue. Um, but I'm just simply sharing what I see in daily data in the office. Um, so let's go for it. So uh, this is my name and I'm going to click to the next spot. So like I mentioned, I can't see anything on the chat right now, but I do want you to guys, as I start clicking, start thinking, and then feel free to interact in the chat if any of this uh, experiences you have seen, uh, you have been either uh, a victim or either you have just witnessed, or maybe you learned this from others, such as a car accident, uh, a medical trauma, someone, a loved one had to be in the hospital because of a terminal illness, or maybe you yourself had to be in a hospital because you were um, scared. Um, for your life, did you experience or witness domestic violence in your life, um, sexual abuse, uh, especially among the family members or a neighbor, a friend, someone that you knew, sexual abuse or so sexual assault slash rape, someone that you did not know, someone just randomly attacked you or emotional abuse, uh, insults, calling you names, uh, humiliating you community violence, did you grow up in a community where um, it was not safe um, and could be in, not just in America, it could be in a different country. Uh, school violence, this is going crazy. And I do not, can understand um, how our kids are being exposed to guns and, and guns emergencies going on, um, physical assault as well, physical abuse. Um, neglect. So feel free to, as you, if you feel comfortable, you can just write in in the chat, yes or no, yes or no, natural disaster, impaired caregiver, meaning um, someone was not able to take care of you because of they had a, she had a, a drug and alcohol abuse maybe, or they were incarcerated and they were not able to be there for you. Terrorism, bereavement, loss of a loved one, um, maybe a pet, um, separation, separation because you, let's say you immigrated to this country and you had to separate from your loved ones, uh, or maybe you went through a divorce or you, uh, whether yourself or your parents divorced uh, when you were a young age, um, domestic violence. I mean, I, I think I misread that war, political violence, uh, forced displacement, meaning that because of a political violence, you had to be forced and you had to be a refugee somewhere else that is wild as well in other parts of, of our country, sex trafficking, sexual exploitation. Um, it is sad. I do see some cases about this one. Bullying not just for kiddos, but also for adults, um, cyberbullying, any, any type of bullying, um, whatever ages you have. Uh, did you uh, witness suicide? Uh, that also affects us very much so. Did you attempt it to uh, have a suicide? That can be traumatic. Maybe you did not uh, go all the way. Maybe you went halfway or uh, abortion, miscarriage. Uh, uh, this is also hard, 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 because there could be so much guilt and shame. A death threat, infidelity, poverty, and the list can go on and on. So just picture that. It, and I did it on purposely. Uh, the paper, as you can see on the right, is a picture because the paper can be just so nice and, and, and straight, but once you crash it, you can't put it back. You know, it's all like, all wrinkle. Uh, so breakup, infidelity, uh, infidelity, and so on. So what is resiliency? So I put three examples about resiliency and you guys can read it as well. Um, it's the process, let me move my little picture here. It's a process of adopting Adopting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or any significant stress. Any significant stress. That's the American Psychology Association definition. Another one we have is it's a capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. All right. 
recover difficult it makes sense another one from psychology today it says allow some people to be knocked down by adversities of life and come back at least as strong as before i like that definition as well in summary i will say is our ability to recover from any changes or any misfortune that i will say power to recover power to recover and someone also mentioned about it's an adaptive behavior that you can learn and um, and when you build our resiliency we're able to recover from hardship in a more healthier way not only mentally but also uh, physically so i thought okay well what what is the origins of this word and i learned this today uh, that uh, it seems like there's a post-classical Latin uh, definition where it comes from avoidance. And there's a second one that I do like the most for this topic. It's the classical Latin resilient, where it's the verb is resalire, to leap, which has, um, has multiple definitions of leap, of jumping, a uh, leap of jumping on the on a long way over and over again to face adversities and it's also says to rebound or recoiled and to shrink from so i thought that picture can help us to visualize okay you the tennis ball rebound back and forth and the egg that that is not you that you don't break um, a bit of research that I do like and I find it interesting, and I knew this from way back when I was undergrad is, and this is what actually made me curious about counseling, and uh, is that the power that one strong adult relationship is the key ingredient in resiliency. One, one person. Um, it obviously has to be positive, it has to be adaptive where the person is responding. And another one that I like is resiliency depends of, on a supportive person, it has to be present, has to be responsive, and it has to, and mastering a set of capabilities that can help us respond and adapt and adapt in a, in a person in a healthy way. If those capacities and relationships that that can turn into toxic stress, into horrible stress. And we don't want that. We don't want to make, to make things unhealthy uh, or normalize them, if that makes any sense. And I put a little bit of the research link right there at the end. Uh, what about a, the body? Well, um, research sets for the kids that the, 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 the developmenting brain relies upon consistency, serve and return interactions that happens between a young child and a primary caregiver. When these interactions occur regularly, they provide a scaffolding that helps build key capacities such as ability to plan, ability to monitor, to regulate. If anybody's a parent, you may wanna hear this. Um, ability to adapt and changing circumstances. Um, I'm currently working with a kiddo. I have two kiddos that are having a really difficult time to adapt to changes and regulate their behaviors. This is kids who are 10, 10, eight years old because of anger. And unfortunately, um, and us as parents you know we don't we don't mean any wrong um we don't know sometimes what we're doing but parents sometimes when they say i want them to avoid pain i want to you know not cry not not suffer that is part of life you know we know that pain in us is inedible but suffering suffering it's a choice depending on the circumstances here okay um so kids do need to know that pain is part of our life we cannot be the helicopter parent we cannot protect them from this this is going to make them grow yes and um what else i'm saying here but in the absence of this responses relationships if we're missing this part the brain's architecture doesn't develop ultimately the body perceives the absence as a threat and it activates a stress response that if prolonged, the physiological changes affect the brain and overall the system, the physical and the mental. 
and this obviously can become toxic. But you know what? With this said, and the research, you know, making, um, we were happy that we had this research. We also want to focus that our children are not just for this kingdom. Our children are also for and for heaven. You know, and and when we have that that perspective. The, that spectrum of, I don't want them because I want them to be successful. I want them to have a house. I want them to that. But how about, you know, what the reason why we have them, the gift, you know, the, the responsibility that God has given us in our, in our hands to, to, for something more, not just for this world, but, but uh, for us, uh, for later on. Some of the myths that I have, and I'm reading back and forth because I have my iPad here, uh, the myths that uh, you guys can see is that you might think, well, maybe resilience is something that I'm never going to show emotion. Wrong. <laughs> you do want to show your emotion. You do want to regulate, my sisters. Because uh, if you don't regulate, then I don't want this to, to bottle it up and then explode. Or even worse, I don't want you to numb your emotions where to the point that you don't know what a feeling is. And I've actually been working with someone um, who who been having a hard time to, to even know what kind of emotions are anymore because she's been so locked up into herself. And one of the suggestions I give for people who believe that maybe my feelings are being numb is could be music. Music can open <laughs> different kinds of emotions and, and memories, is it not? So music is wonderful. Um, the second uh, resiliency myth is that it only it's only about individual, only about me. Wrong. Uh, it's about individuals and relationships. Uh, and I'll tell you why. It's having others who respect you unconditionally people who are rooting for you, people who are by your side, that is gonna help you to build resiliency. So asking for help, it's not a sign for weakness. Asking for help is not a sign for weakness. It's a sign of strength. And people who learn how to ask for help are more likely to be res resilient. And, uh, and actually I didn't know this, but research shows that people who ask for help are viewed as being more trustworthy and competent. And competent, okay? Because, I mean, think about it. I mean, if your managers, if your supervisors see that you're, you're asking questions, you're interested, you're involved, okay. You know, this is a person who is responsible, who is committed and does not, is not afraid to, uh, to ask questions. Moving on, must handle everything on your own. No, my sister. Asking for help is a resilient strategy. Ask for help as a resilient strategy. Um, the thought about that always acts fast. No, you can take your own time. You, if you need to slow down, that is your own time. The process of healing may not be quick, Okay, which is why we should not uh, compare to other people's journeys. Uh, but when we are healed, we're able to remember life events with less or without experiences of pain and fear. Um, so e each of us are going to go with our own journey. Um, and always fully composed? No, nah, not, not always. Not, it's not always pretty or one color or white or black. It, it's, it's different different shapes. Uh, something that I did not, was not able to add on the PowerPoints is some, the thought about you either have it or you don't. Um, that is not true. It's everyone can develop this. It says people who are resilient practice this daily. It becomes the daily habit. For some people, adversity becomes more natural. I get it. Sometimes we can see, how is this girl? <laughs> she, she just had this and this and that, and she just looks just fine <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> um, I, I, I know, I've been there. Um, and others can seem that they learn so quickly, but a way to help you or reframe that thought could be 
having an optimistic attitude. Attitude is everything. It will change your mood. It will change your glasses, your perspective of how you see things. Positive self-talk. We know Sister Ellen G. White talks about, you know, the words have power. What you say to yourself and gratitude. After all, resilience is a verb. Resilience is a verb, not a noun. And challenges become opportunities to grow and learn. And it will, it, it's challenges is what make us unique too. It's your own. You know, your chaos is gonna be different than somebody else's chaos, but you guess what? Once you learn to build resiliency, that is what makes you for who you are. You know? And nobody else will be able to understand that other than you and, and God, of course, but that's the beauty, that, that's what makes you. Um, so, and last point about myths versus fact is that resilient people never burn out. We know that in the Bible, we have people that clearly have burned out in the past. And we're going to know a few character, Bible characters uh, as we move on. So it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. So remember with the tennis ball, um, I know that sometimes tragic events occur because of wrong choices that we make. I understand that. Um, but not everything. So we're going to have a taste of everything. So moving on, I did like this quote from um, Martin Luther King. If some of you guys might feel like, uh, you know, if you can't fly, then run. If you can run, then walk. If you can walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. And this is the hope that I want to bring to you all. If anything else, keep moving forward amen uh and remember about paul you know paul i know he became a evangelistic guy and he also became a missionary for god but he also had traumatic experiences uh abuse persecution and we know that he says we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Amen. So I know this attitude's not might seem unnatural, but this ability might seem supernatural, but we can do with all things with Christ who strengthened us. So I like pictures. That's why you're seeing a lot of pictures. <laughs> There's different types of resiliency characteristics on Google. I just decided to pick this one uh, that could resonate with what I want to share. As while you're still looking at the pictures, I'm going to read through my notes that I have here. Um, connection, building connection, and at this age, I don't know if I can qualify myself young or, or old. <laughs> Um, relationships do become priority and friendships, you do have to make them intentional. Now, regardless if you're married or single, you have to guard your, your friendships. You know, they're not as, as much as before, maybe when you were young, or if you have some sort of social media, uh, your friendships are more smaller and, and, you know, closer. So connect with empathy and understand people understanding people can remind you that you're not alone. This is again, how to characteristics of how to have a resiliency. For example, when Christ asked for the disciples to pray for him, do you guys remember that in Matthew 26, where he sits, sits, uh, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he says to the disciples, my soul is overwhelming sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. If Jesus himself asks for, so, for support, I think we should do the same. And if you're doing, you're already doing it, continue doing it. So, and I know people are going back to church, which is great if you can't, if you cannot go back to church, continue doing Zoom, whatever you can to connect yourself, please do so. Cause this is gonna help you to build resiliency. Uh, another point is that take care of your body and mind. Uh, what do I mean by that is that when we are in constant fight or flight, say, yes, we have a domestic violence, we have, we're in the middle of a war, um, your body is always going to keep <laughs> um, activated. Um, and 
as well as the emotional factor, it's key here. Um, emotional factors could be relationships, financial anxiety, you can have health issues. Um, all of this is going to produce more stress. So not even mention about fear, fear, hurt, pain, um, all of those are going to be challenges, um, which is why those hardships we should think about. So instead of why me, what do, what can I do next? You know, I, I, I'm sad about what this is happening. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it, but I'm, I'm going to ask the question, what does God want me to do while I'm going through this process of, of you know, mind and character for resiliency? Another piece I like is that I know it's, it might be tempting to put a mask. When I say a mask, it could be any substance use, could be, um, you know, relationships, could be uh, food, sex, you name it, you know? Um, and that could be just a temporarily baggage uh, or band-aid on, on, you know, on yourself. How about, and I'm being into exploring other holistic or natural ways of enhancing those happy hormones. What I'm talking about here is oxytocin. I know you guys heard about this before so many times, which is the love hormone. Um, if you don't have anybody to love or hug, you might have a pet. <laughs> you might have a pet. Maybe you have your neighbor has a baby that you can go ahead and hug <laughs> and get that oxytocin relationship lovey. Or maybe you can give compliments or receive compliments as well. Um, how about the dopamine? We heard dopamine as the feel reward hormone. How you how you can do this by completing a task or or trying to eat a healthier way or celebrate task or, or, or projects that you're able to do. And or uh, also endorphins, which is the willpower, uh, will help you to create good habits, um, exercise. Everybody has been able to exercise, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I've been trying, I've been trying to do it where I live. Um, I have not been able to go to the gym, but um, per se, but I've been just been trying to do it wherever you can, your garage, your room, if you're in an apartment, in the park, create a habit. Now, now, now is the time that you can create a habit. There's always a chance to create a new habit. And last but not least, build a resiliency. And I think you see on the top left of setting a goal, setting a purpose, um, will help you find the reason why am I here? You know, where am I going? Where did I come from? Um, our youth or sometimes adults as well don't know uh, what, what is their identity, what is their purpose, uh, which they can be mixed and confused with other distractions going around. And then they're like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I don't know where to start. Um, God is telling us, you know, he, he, he told us from the very beginning, you know, he, he, he reconciled with us, even when we were sinners, even when we were not even present, he reconciled with us. And I know when we talk about reconciliation, we talk about a relationship that you already had. In this case, God already had a, a redeeming plan for us. So amen for, for that. Uh, moving forward, we're gonna, I'm just gonna share a few Bible characteristics with you guys, and you probably can guess by the picture who this person can be. Our first character is uh, Hope. Hope, um, uh, or Job. And I'm going to say some Spanish words because English is not my first language. <laughs> so um, forgive me if some of my words might be uh, better pronouncing. In Spanish. So hope, the patient of hope, we know this story. Um, and I'm putting here the Bible verse so you guys can read it as well as uh, James 5, 9, 11, where it says, don't grumble against one another. Brothers and sisters, you will be, you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. 
brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Joe's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Perseverance, key. So the story of hope is a supreme example of resilience. You know, we know that early in his life, hope have, had an understanding that God, that God is merciful in righteousness. Early understanding. Hmm? Um, he did not understand the reason for his suffering. He did not find support from his wife or husbands. He, his property and children were destroyed. Um, and then he contact, he had a horrible disease. And yet somehow among all this, he never lost faith in God and endured until the very end. So what, what help someone said, I was reading an article by someone who said that, um, uh, this patient, what he, she liked about his cancer is that uh, my counselor insisted my painful dis, dis, the, uh, circumstances will come to an end. Let me rephrase that because I don't think I said it that right. Um, that this client was saying to, his, uh, to someone else that her counselor insisted that her painful circumstances, ladies, will come to an end. And it looks dark and unending now the counselor used to say to this client, but it will not last too much longer. This thought helped me to gain resiliency. In other words, the counselor kept the woman's hope alive. And that's where you, it's good to have someone else to help you as well. Okay. Um, I posted a link of, of the where I got this information. Um, Spirit of prophecy tell us that uh, calamities are not an index to sin. Um, it is very natural for human beings to think that great calamities are a sure index of great crimes or enormous sins, but men often make a mistake and thus measuring character. We're not living in the time of retri retribute judgment. Good and evil are mingled. Calamities come upon all, or maybe some, only his faithful ones. It comes to everyone. Sometimes men do pass the boundary line beyond God's protection, protecting care. And then guess who comes? Satan exercises his power upon them, and God does not inter interpose. For example, hope. Hope was sore, sorely afflicted and his friends sought to make him acknowledge that his suffering was the result of sin and caused him to feel under condemnation. His presented, they, they represented this case as, as a great sinner, but the Lord rebuked them for their judgment. I hope this is making some sense for you guys. So how about the friends? That could be us too. Um, that could be us. So, there is a weakness in our world, it says the spirit of prophecy, but all of the suffering is not the result of a, a perverted course of life. Hope, Job, is brought distantly before us as a man who the Lord allows Satan to, to afflict. The enemy stripe him of all he possess. His family's ties were broken. His children were taken from him. For a time, his body was covered with loathsome sores, and he suffered greatly. You know, his friends came to comfort him, but they tried to make him see that he was responsible. Have you ever made someone responsible for what they're going through? Have you ever um, perhaps remember? You know, a time where someone did that to you or you did this to someone else, perhaps. Um, and by seeking to make, and let me move my picture here, by seeking to make him guilty before God and deserving of his punishment, they brought a grievous test upon him and represented God in a false light. But hope did not swear from his loyalty. 
and God reward him his faithful servant. God will keep him safe, faithful as long we, as long as we keep him faithful, he will be faithful. He will always be faithful for us. Always. So reflection questions, I don't need you guys to answer right now, but it's uh, the reflection questions that I have here is that remember for time, sisters, when you were going, whatever you were going through at that time, that what kind of hope sustained you? What was that thought? Uh, what words spoken to you were helpful during that time? Which ones were not so helpful for you or which ones were harm harmful? Okay. Yeah. Next one, we have Joseph. I like Joseph. Uh, one of my favorite um, uh, characters of the Bible. And I put the, the Bible verses or Bible reference for you guys to read that tonight if you would like to remember. If you try to put yourself into Joseph's sandals or Joseph's idea or idea, experience, if you will, um, think how discouraged he must have been. Okay, think about the potential of anger and bitterness that maybe he could have had. I know the Bible does not say that, but I mean, I'm sure the guy had some sort of emotions and thoughts going through his mind as well. He was no different than you and me. Um, so the reflection questions that I want to prompt you and, and have you exercise here is, have you ever had a terrible experience that in the end, it brought you a benefit? How can this help you learn to trust the Lord in any adversity, even when nothing good seems likely to result? Let me jump to the next one. I have here, he, this is Spirit of Prophecy, uh, Patriarchs and Prophets. He had been told of the Lord's promise to Jacob and how they had been fulfilled. How in the hour of need, the angels of God came to instruct, beautiful, to comfort, to protect him. And he had learned of the love of God and providing for men a redeemer. Now all of these precious lessons came vividly before him. Joseph believed that God of that the God of his fathers will be his God. He then and there gave himself fully to the Lord. I will love for us to, to have this. We do. In times like this, we have to uh, strive for this relationship, strive to believe that God will come to instruct us when you are crying in your closet and your closet alone. When you need that comfort because no one understands you and no one believes you. Or when you have been through a betrayal, when you have been through a breakup, and to know that God can protect you because no matter what, he is our first husband. So Joseph, I like Joseph because it makes me, it reminds me of character development, character de development. It helps me remind about how to have empathy. I can't believe the guy, he even cared to look around um, who was sad, who was not himself, forgot if he, he asked the, the the bread guy or the wine guy who um he was he was kind of not feeling himself or feeling kind of down and he asked you know what's the matter what's wrong he noticed he was paying attention he was being empathizing with people around us are we doing the same thing too are we watching our sisters and brothers how they're doing are we checking in with them sending a text message sending a phone call you know reaching out empathy empathy is something that we're lacking Today, more than ever, I feel like everyone feels entitled in the name of what whatever pandemic that is happening around us, they can go ahead and yell and mistreat others. But where's empathy? Where is that understanding for others to what they're going through? Even though you don't have to agree, but at least you can listen and validate you know, uh, someone. Um, I like Joseph because of uh, discipleship, his humility to learn, um, understand of good of evil, 
these are some of the lessons that we can learn with Joseph. Although it is difficult to think of the benefits of suffering, especially in the midst of trial, we can ask God for the necessity strength to pass through difficulties. Um, this is some Bible verses that I thought you guys can, um, maybe I can read one of them. Where bad situations can be turned into good. Mm, are you sure? Well, um, Romans, Romans 5, 3 to 5, it says, and not only so, but we glory, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work patient and patient experience and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given into us. That's just one example of how bad situations can turn into good by looking through this Bible uh, uh, verses. I think 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4 talks about how um, comforting and suffering. It says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all tribulation, that we might be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Another Bible characteristic that we have is Naomi. Naomi. So, um, Naomi, we understand that living, or I don't know, maybe I was, I'm the only one here who did not, was not born here in the United States, maybe some of you guys as well, uh, can relate to uh, language difficulties of learning how, um, you know, go to school, go to college here. That was such a culture shock for me. Um, you, the food, uh, traditions, you name it. So with Naomi, what I want to bring here is that I can only imagine it, it was hard for her uh, due to the circumstances that back then it was, I know there was a fame of, of, um, of how do you say fame? Um, <laughs> and and Judah that she was forced to come. You see, I'm <laughs> I'm already double saying words here. Uh, that she had to leave, and that soon later, you know, her husband passed away, and then her, her children. But at the deepest moment of trouble, Naomi's daughter-in-law Ruth, as you can see in the picture, serve as God sent emotional support. Look at God; He's always ahead of ahead of us. Naomi must have been a remarkable woman to have inspired the devotion of her two daughters-in-law, especially Ruth, who accepted the God of Israel and made the firm decision to care, to care for Naomi, um, uh, to care for life, and, and in a land whose inhabitants were historically their, their enemies. So the reflection question that I have here is, is how, however much we ultimately need to trust in God, oh, you know, we, we have to have that relationship with the Lord and we have to surrender to him. But at times we do need a human help as well. When, when was the last time you really needed someone to help you? What, what did you gain from this experience? Let's see, who can guess who is it? Who is this? Oh, I have the Bible verse here already. Esther, 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 what, are, what were some of adversity struggles or pressures that Sister Esther had to have faced? I think you all do remember and you all can definitely relate to what she had to experience back then. I have a quote here from Prophets and Kings about how the crisis that Esther faced demanded something quick. Sometimes at work, I have to do be quick and keep it calm, especially when, and you guys know this, when stuff comes to your face and you're like, okay, <laughs> let me keep my, my posture. I know you're yelling at me. I know you're upset. <laughs> I know you are telling me you're about to 
commit suicide, but I need to be, you know, think quick. <laughs> um, and Esther was this, Esther faced with quick, earnest action, but both she and Mordecai uh, realized that unless God should work mightily in their behalf, their own efforts will be unveiling. So Esther took the time for commun communion with God, the source of our strength. God, go, she directed Mordecai. Gather together all the Jews that are in the present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink in three days, night or day. I also, I, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perished, I perished. Oof. She was willing to take the risk. She was willing to take the risk. So the greater responsibility placed on her sister Esther was being left as a sole channel, as the, the front person, if you will, to save her nation, to save the nation. Mordecai asked her to meditate on behalf of the Jews, which she could not do without risking her life. When she hesitated, her cousin put still more pressure on her. If you remain silent at this time, rely and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. You can find this in Esther 4.14. So talk about stressed. <laughs> you're the only one you're the only one who perhaps you can be the only one who can help your family perhaps you're the only one who has to be the parent when you yourself are only the child and you're seeing your parents your brothers not being like in it and you're the only one who is god is speaking to you and you have to take that risk that front um fight if you will for your family um, and i know it's hard um finally she appeared before the king knowing that such as an ad carrier with a high chance of death in the end though things worked out however dangerous situations was at that time for this young lady so my reflection for you with this story all of us like esther are born into situations that that not of our own making like she, she didn't ask for this this was just things that happen around her environment what is your background what things were handed to you whether you were a child whether you're adolescent whether you're an adult Maybe you're a caregiver for your parent, um, for, for, for a sibling, for someone who passed away, now you have to take care, take care of your niece, good or bad, that you didn't ask for. How can you learn to appreciate more the good that you have been given and to overcome the bad? Moving on, moving on, I have another, another guy, Oh. Sorry, Lexi. I just wanted to remind you of the time. We we want to start wrapping up so we can grab some time before we hit our nine o'clock mark. Good. Two minutes? Uh, one minute. One minute. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So with Paul, I'll just leave you with the with the thought about the secret of being con uh of of being um contentment. Of, of having this crucial component of happiness and psychological well-being. Uh, we know that contentment is a state of, of constant acceptance, you know, of one situation. And I'll just skip to the to the slides. So for you just to keep to know, just to motivate you that this is this is a race. Um, this is a race. Let us run with perseverance with the race uh, marked out for us, mixing our eyes on Jesus. And and know that uh, you do not know that those who run in the race all run, but one will receive the prize. And remember, you, we are those eagles. Those who who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will they will soar their wings with like eagles. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to end with the uh, with my little thought about summary that remember resilience is not a success. It's about making choices. It, it's about it's not keep doing the same thing as everybody else. Don't compare yourself, um, and know that. Ask yourself, whatever you're thinking, is it helping you or harming you? Um, and talk to yourself like if, like someone you love. And that will be it. Lexi, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate this last slide. You talk to yourself like someone you love because how much do we offer kind words and, and, and um, you know, thoughtful um, moments with other individuals, but sometimes we're the harshest critic to ourselves, you know, and we can kind of bring ourselves down and whatnot. So I really appreciate this last slide. Um, so thank you so much for, for this presentation. There was a, a, a verse that I thought you were going to put into your last few slides. And I don't know if anyone else thought of this verse as well, um, but it's Proverbs, I believe it's 24, 16, that says, you know, righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up um, again, right? And so it's just that thought of no matter what is hitting you, no matter what is bringing you down, get back up, get back up. And we don't have to do it alone is what I gathered from your presentation. We have you know, the help of other individuals and more importantly, the help um, from God to keep on going. So thank you so, so much. Um, so I know we are kind of running out of time. However, if anyone has any thoughts or, or, or questions that they wanna share with, with Lexi or ask Lexi, um, now is your time. We can maybe squeeze in one or two questions, um, but the floor is yours, ladies. Anyone has a question, feel free to raise your hand. Onika, yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Lexi, for um, sharing this uh, present. Well, for doing this presentation, it was very um helpful because you know sometimes you feel like because you're not at where you feel like you should be that there isn't a victory. But even in like getting up or even in like moving forward, no matter how much you're moving, um, you know, that's that's a victory in and of itself. But I guess um, my question was, um, what's it called? Um, so I had written something in the chat, but I also wanted to ask about um, the family dynamic. Like I understand you, you touched on it, um, where it's like you feel like you're the only person that's like, um, Sex, not success minded, but like uh, mindful of um, the importance of like doing certain, like being mindful of like things that you say, things that you do, and like how that can like affect the future of like the family and like how, um, you know, saying things or doing things can, um, you know, hinder someone else's mental health struggle. But like you feel like you're the only person that's mindful of that. Like when there's, um, you know, kind of like the um, the matriarch of the family kind of like fell off on that. Um, like, what do you like? How do you cope with that? Like, I know it's I don't imagine that there's like a simple answer, but like, you know, how does one move in that without like, you know, giving up and just um, moving, going with the flow, so to speak? I hope that makes sense. No, it does. It does. Um, unfortunately, I can't see anybody because <laughs> my computer froze, but I hear you. So 